I guess the only way to start this video properly is to come clean. I legitimately enjoy playing bad Yu-Gi-Oh decks. And I enjoy playing bad decks because I feel I'm granted more opportunities to get creative with my builds and go against the grain. One of my favorite bad decks is Magnet Warriors, only second to Toons. So today, I want to show some appreciation for a deck that stuck with me through thick and thin. And although it's bad in terms of I get rocked, no pun intended, when facing actual tier 1 decks, my Magnet Warrior build is one of the most consistent and nearing meta contender that I have in my arsenal that can occasionally squeak out a victory on the hyper consistent decks of today's competitive landscape. We're covering my favorite cards that support rock type monsters as a whole and basically what I play in my modern Magnet Warrior deck. Well, let's start with a very much normie pick in Ad Emancipators. While I could say the Ad Emancipator archetype as a whole is a buff that any rock deck lives and dies by, I'd specifically highlight Ad Emancipator Researcher, Ad Emancipator Risen Raptite, and Ad Emancipator Signs. Researcher was a very welcome addition to the deck, especially during the times of a free Halky Fibrax. Being a free body that could bring another Magnet Warrior to the party made for the easiest synchro in rank 4 plays. And of course, being a level 2 made it the perfect combo with Magnet Warriors to go into Raptite, which could bring yet another Magnety boy from the deck. Finally, Ad Emancipator Signs offers great recovery for any Magnet Warrior used as a synchro material and or that was detached as Xyz material. It basically became a 4th, 5th, and 6th copy of their field spell, Magnetic Field. Two of the most recent additions to my Ultimate Magnet Warrior deck are Carterin, the Hidden Gem of the Seafront, and Epigonin, the Impersonation Invader. Carterin was originally a card that I wasn't completely sold on because Magnet Warriors didn't desperately need an extra normal summon with the assistance of the Ad Emancipator cards. However, I can't understate just how clutch this card has come in to help me re-establish a board that was blown up by my opponent. And outside of that, the extra summon is never unappreciated, as it opens up further plays or starting plays if I don't happen to find an Ad Emancipator or Magnet Induction in my opening hand. Epigonin is a card that's become very special to me as a pseudo boss monster and also allows access to synchro monsters outside of levels 5 and 6, which before Borrowed Savage Dragon was banned was an amazing option. Its best use came in sacking a used up researcher and or comboed well with Carterin after using its summon from Grave Effect to populate my entire field with materials for the extra deck. I love this card, and I dare say that it's my favorite in the deck overall. Next up is the perfect example of older cards meshing beautifully with new cards. Revival Golem, which debuted in Return of the Duelist, which has the effect to special summon itself from the grave if it was sent there from the deck. Foolish Burial is always a great option to accomplish specifically what this rocky fella needs. But what if I told you there was a blue pill? A better option. Miracle Rupture. You know it's good because Giant Soldier of Stone is on it, the epitome of a classic and great rock monster. Miracle Rupture is literally just Foolish Burial for rock type monsters, and the best part is that it's not limited. You can run three of these bad boys, and you best believe that I do. It also has a fun effect where you can draw a card on top of the dump if Fossil Fusion is in your graveyard when it's activated. I have tried the Fossil cards in my Magnet Warrior build because they have some cool effects to use, but the need to run Foolish Burial Goods to Turbo Fossil Fusion into the graveyard unfortunately ended up clogging up the deck more than helping it. Don't get me wrong, I do really like the rest of the Fossil cards, but they're better suited in their own dedicated deck. All but one card in my entire Magnet Warrior build serves a purpose, but in all honesty, that one exception is the most fun card to play in the deck, regardless of how terrible it is by comparison. And that card is Geonator Transverser, a Link 2 that I only started playing because it was one of the three rock-type Link monsters in the entire game at the time that could actually be played in Magnet Warriors. And it has the effect to switch control of two monsters that it points to. It's very specific in its application and when it can be used, but I can't deny how excited I get when I see the opportunity to take a card from my opponent. And on the subject of extra deck exclusives, Gallant freaking Granite. Regardless of him being material generic, every modern rock focused deck that I have created started with three copies of this powerhouse in the extra deck. Searching, 
field presence on top of a respectable bodied and two material rank four. This was ultimately the card that had me revisiting Magnet Warriors to fully take on the task of making them my most competitively viable deck. But going fully against any viability in tournaments, the last card I want to talk about is a day one alongside the Magnet Warriors themselves. Mega Rock Dragon. I don't care how bad it is. Mega Rock Dragon was the first boss monster I had for this deck in addition to Valkyrion. And even today, I still run one copy of it in my side deck and when the stars align and matches arise that I can sneak in the Mega Rock, you best believe he's jumping into the fight. Fight, 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 fight. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! And before we end the video today, I want to leave you on some words of wisdom. This game is exactly what you make it. Don't worry about what the meta is. Don't worry about what new tier 1 deck there is. Play what you want to play. Have fun with the game. Make your own decks. Get creative. Find your favorite cards and figure out how to make them work. But that's going to wrap up today's discussion guys and now I want to hear from you. What are your favorite decks to play in this game? And what cards do you add to those decks to make it your own? Drop a comment down below. If you like the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. Greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV. Signing up.